After creating the OSR to MP4 resampling video, I wanted to see if I could have saved some extra time by using some different settings and decided to benchmark OSR to MP4 in a bunch of different settings and share the findings with all of you. I tested OSR to MP4 in 3 different ways. I used 4 different FPS values, 4 different process options and 3 different CRF options. Now that I said a bunch of gibberish, it's time to explain what they actually mean. For FPS, I've gone with 120, 240, 480 and 960 FPS, since those are the only values that make sense when it comes to videos recorded with OSR than before that are meant to be resampled. For the processes I mentioned, OSR24 has an option that allows you to choose how much of your CPU and RAM you want to use while rendering a replay. Values go from 0 to as high as your PC can support, which in my case is 4. Basically, every process uses approximately 20% of your CPU and 2GB of RAM, and for any value over 1, any extra process that is added is used to render a different part of the replay, which speeds up the entire process. The only limitation is the amount of RAM that you have in your system. Lastly, the CRF options are for FFmpeg encoding. CRF itself meaning constant frame rate. CRF has values that determine how good the final video will look, and they go from 0 to 51, the default being 23. Values such as 17 or 18 are already visually lossless, but the most popular values are 15 and 0, so I decided to test 0, 15 and 24. I messed up and thought 24 was the default, however there are no differences between 23 and 24. The method of testing is as follows. All of the clips were rendered with a Ryzen 5 3600X and base clocks and all of the values were acquired by rendering a replay that was exactly 1 minute and 30 seconds long. I also added a baseline that has 5 seconds added for stuff like tabbing into OSU and starting the replay, then turning the recording off after the map is finished as if it was recorded with OBS. The time was tracked by using OBS to record OSR to MP4 from the moment I started the render up until the time it made the ding noise indicating that it was finished. Let's first check out rendering at CRF0, which is visually and technically lossless, but it's considered overkill for 99% of uses, but that does not stop some people using it. Rendering wise, it is not very time consuming to render at either 120 or 240 FPS, however we can see a pattern emerging that if you double the FPS values, the time to render will also double, however the downfall of CRF0 is not in the render times, it's in the file sizes. Considering what FFmpeg can do, 412 megabytes for 1.5 minutes of recording is pretty absurd. It is almost as big as if you were going to record with OBS at half the frame rate. Well, that depends on the OBS settings, and you can see that it gets even worse the higher we go, rendering CRF0 completely overkill for any normal use cases. Next up is CRF15. It provides much more usable content in terms of video size but does not impress with rendering times. Video sizes are much better now, with even the 960 FPS video being much more lightweight while visually maintaining the same quality of CRF0, and I was fully satisfied with the results even though I usually use 18 instead of 15. Rendering length was a slight improvement, topping out at a 30 second improvement for the 960 FPS clip, so if you're chasing for the fastest rendering times, you will not find any noticeable improvement if you're not rendering at or over 960 FPS. The last CRF value is 24. This value is not really recommended as it's not considered visually lossless, therefore I would also not recommend to use them. However, if you're tight on your memory rejoice as the values are even better than before, with the 960 clip being just 24 megs, which is 2 times less than the 960 FPS clip with CRF15. Render lengths are almost indistinguishable from CRF15, therefore you should only use CRF24 if you don't want to use up too much space on your hard drive or SSD. So to summarize, here are all of the values put up together and for your viewing pleasure. As we can see, CRF options will not impact your render times much, but the space that the videos will take up varies wildly. 15 is for losslessness, and 18 for a little bit of less space used. Next up are the process values, and since there were so many different tests, I'll just show you the final graph and explain what's going on. 
As mentioned previously, processes determine how much of your computing power OSR to empty for the news, and as you let OSR to empty for use more processes, the faster the renders get. The recommended value from Uitor and Philippe, the main admins of the OSR to empty for, and mine as well, is process 3, as it will not make your PC unusable, depending on how much RAM you have, but will still deliver the most optimized render times. Anything over will deliver slightly smaller improvements, such as faster render or 960 FPS, by a mere 7 seconds or so. Thank you very much for watching. If you like my content, be sure to subscribe and let me know what you want to see next. See ya!